so I'm kind of nervous and really excited about this one. To my mind, the iPad Data Messenger is one of the most important uh, handheld devices to ever come out of HP's uh, efforts. Well, I don't know what that meant, but anyway, you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, I won't give away too much that early on, but check it out. This is a sliding QWERTY keyboard uh, device. Not only that, it's actually a prototype version of said lineup. So it's quite important that I review it and uh, well, you know, I got lucky and bought this thing for about 10 euros. It's actually in working condition and it aesthetically it looks excellent really. Just the minor scuff here at the top, but I'll get more on that later on during a proper uh, tabletop view and explanation as to what this thing actually is and whether you should consider buying one as a collection piece, as a conversation starter, or mainly because you're just a hoarder like, like I am. Okay, so as I've stated in the intro, I'm probably the only one excited about this device and I don't really know how to start the review, so I'm just going to quickly mention some specs while I turn it on. Uh, this uh, is a proper GSM smartphone announced in 2008 and released in 2009. It's got a bar factor but it also hides a QWERTY keyboard. It's a slider QWERTY smartphone which is pretty impressive in of itself. Uh, the screen is actually a 2.81 inch screen which doesn't sound quite that much and really it isn't. It only has a 240 by 320 pixel resolution, uh, 4.3, uh, 4 to 3 aspect ratio with 142 ppi, that's pixel per inch density. I agree, that's not quite that much. Um, it's a TFT resistive touch screen with 65,000 colors. So it's not a capacitive one, but it still offers a, a stylus hidden here flush with the body of the device, which is looking rather nice, but I'll get to that in a moment. Let's just quickly run through the specs. Uh, it's a Qualcomm chipset, an MSM 7201A with a CPU uh, rated at 528 MHz and an Adreno 130 GPU. Well, that's pretty impressive. It only has 128 megabytes of RAM with 256 megabytes of ROM. Uh, the shooter on the back is a 3.15 megapixel uh, camera with autofocus and it doesn't have a selfie camera. It also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and a micro USB connection with a, I believe there's also a jack port here somewhere. Yes, that, there it is. And well, maybe most important of all, the OS is a Windows Mobile 6, but I guess you saw that during the startup. Uh, enough about the specs really, because those are just have the story, as they say. This is a rather interesting device. So my first contact with the, the iPad Data Messenger was about uh, 2013. You know, I wanted a different phone. I wanted something special, not the classic, typical uh, GSM feature phone or the newly launched and very successful uh, Apple and Android based uh, models of the time. The typical slab of, uh, of uh, plastic, the obligatory uh, protected uh, touch screen with Gorilla Glass and so on. So in, to my mind I wanted something special plus I was still using the Blackberry devices and I loved the keyboard. I loved the physical keyboard and really this was just up my alley. 
Little did I know, though, that the quality wasn't quite up uh, up there. It wasn't on par with what the competition was offering even in 2009. Nevertheless, in 2013, when I first got my grubby little mitts on a almost brand new, I didn't think I was the one to open to unseal the box. But anyway, for all intents and purposes, I got a... a almost new fully functioning iPad data messenger and I was pretty impressed with the build construction let me show you why so to some these uh, these phones would seem too sober too um, too uh, modest to um, the old blue and blackish look really doesn't tell you all that much but in fact if you look at these uh, shiny dark shadowed chrome bits on the sides they are looking quite sharp of course this isn't really metal it's just a piece of plastic which has some decoration on it but the the met metallic finish seems quite genuine and premium in the hand uh, it doesn't creak all that much well not by 2010 standards at least by 2020 standards or 2023 standards yeah this thing isn't quite all that well built i promise you i'm not forcing it but i'm not gentle with the device either so if you force it then this thing will break but for general use and uh well, you know, moderate uh, daily usage, while well, this thing is, is just okay. Honestly, what I would compare this thing to is the Nokia N97, which was launched in about the same time frame and really it has the same form factor. Well, I don't know how the Nokia fares up in terms of build quality, but this isn't too shabby after all uh, on the back you have the removable battery and as I promised to you a small surprise and now I uh, don't tell anybody but I'm going to turn it off by just disconnecting the battery so apologies for that uh, as you can see uh, you have some information about this particular device on the back and well wouldn't you know it this is actually a prototype unit which is quite fun really uh, well consider that this is uh, well it's a collection piece so I find it quite interesting and well I think it's a rare uh, opportunity to get a device like this now as you can see also on the front on the top of the front bezel there is some writing embossed or I don't know how to explain it indented into the actual paint so there are some some markings here probably in order to avoid selling this device though interestingly enough it also sports a Vodafone logo which probably means this was a with this uh, this particular IPAC uh, data messenger model was sort of a deal between HP and Vodafone to brand the devices and offer them through the through this particular carrier yeah I've been rambling for about three or four minutes but anyway I thought it was important to tell you the story of the iPad data messenger my first contact with it and actually why I didn't use it all that much is not because of the minuscule screen let me just turn it off back on back again and it's not because of the fact that uh, really it offers um, less than a premium or flagship uh, performance it's actually the fact that it's very unstable I remember using it in 2013 and even then well it was four years old the model by the time but anyway it felt very sluggish very uh, difficult to respond it was unresponsive it featured a lot of bugs uh, the slider QWERTY um, 
setup would uh, would naturally have to um, switch between uh, landscape and portrait modes but in fact it did that with a huge lag and the only advantage that I could see really was the the opportunity to write something on the QWERTY keyboard which in of itself wasn't all that great either so compared to Blackberry there were no um, ridges on, or bumps on the QWERTY keyboard the top uh, row was difficult to access uh, the keys weren't intuitive and the response wasn't that great so really I was left kind of um, you know I had I had the feeling of sour grapes I lasted after this device for quite a long time and when I got it I simply couldn't bother with it then I really tr saw the true light and <laughs> well switched over to mainstream smartphones uh, mainly the um, the Galaxy X cover from Samsung, the second generation of which I made a review and I'll show a link here. So anyway, let's test on the camera and see whether this device offers something interesting. So I'm just going to fumble with it for a bit. Here is the stylus somewhere. It's very flush with the body and it's actually a telescoping slider uh, stylus but it also uh, uh, it's snug enough that it uh, it uh, makes it uh, so that it extends while you are uh, removing it from the the device's body it also has a screw here on the top and this uh, this um, I don't know what you call it this um, and piece here gets loose very easily but anyway that's the the stylus itself now um, there is no actual uh, protection on this piece of glass it doesn't really say what type of uh, material is on top of this uh, on top of this touch screen but actually it, I believe it's just plastic so yeah it will get scratched very easily now one interesting fact also is the battery it has a lithium-ion 1200 milliamp hour battery and it's good for about 320 hours of talk in uh, in 2g network which sounds quite a lot but i doubt that it's possible to reach that number anyway let's switch on to the camera so we can end this review on a positive and concrete note so there's uh i don't know which cam which button is the camera shortcut i believe it's this one here there's a slew of buttons on the side here but they're mostly for recording and shortcuts they're not really that practical and they're not uh, individualized so it's kind of difficult to operate them so let's start to try to start the camera here we go yeah so the camera itself is not something to write home about but I'm not doing it any favors either by waiting to focus properly and uh, well I think at this point it doesn't really make sense so quite an underwhelming experience and a disappointing that one at that um, there's a bunch of capacitive buttons on the front and also the uh, call and end call button but being uh, but seeing as this thing is a Windows Mobile 6 it's rather difficult to operate cumbersome not really adapted to um, to mobile uh, gadget usage so I used to love this format and I still feel some attraction the the geekiness of it the, the nerd in me still loves the Windows Mobile setup the no nonsense no uh, animation uh, screens I enjoy that very much but what I don't enjoy is the cumbersome menu the <laughs> the inability to use this thing without a stylus and the low resolution so those are low points but I think 
had Windows stuck with this format and tried to refine it over time to add a no-nonsense, high-resolution, easy-to-function menu, I think this would have been a great platform, but hey, what do I know? I just collect weird and quirky, <laughs> obsolete tech stuff, so I'm not the best person to, to give advice in terms of OS and software. Anyway, there's another mute button on top, a la iPhone models. I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, I will focus it now. Yeah, so it vibrates, um, showing you that it goes into uh, vibrate mode. So that is the very smudgy and, <laughs> well, interesting looking but underwhelming iPad Data Messenger. I guess what's left to do is to take a SIM card and try to call this device, see if it's really uh, functioning today. Now, I must mention that there is a high chance that this device will not function since it's branded as a Vodafone only device. It might be blocked on that network. So let's just see what will happen when we connect a SIM card. I'll just turn it on really quickly and in the meantime I have to search for the pin for this card. Okay, so it says something about the function since it vibrated at the startup. Seeing as the pin was not requested, this is actually not a great sign. Maybe the phone will not function at all. Let me just try to call the device. The device is blocked on the is locked in the Vodafone um, network. So naturally, this will not function uh, in um, what do I have here? I have a telecom network, a SIM card. So yeah, there's also <laughs> a low chance of me being able to unlock this thing since it's an early prototype version. But after all, I didn't buy it for usage. It's really about uh, being able to say, hey, I not only have a rare phone, I have an early prototype version of a very rare early model smartphone. And I guess that says it all about me and my interest. So as always, uh, thanks for watching and remember, I own, hoard and co collect very weird and very rare uh, smartphones and gadgets like this iPad Data Messenger so you don't have to. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.